personally, you know, Mark, we try to stay positive. It's always a blessing to wake up and and uh, try to think on things on a positive tilt. Uh, one of the biggest things I think that's going on in our world today is that um, we spend so much time on the negative. You know, we we go down on YouTube and we look at the negative comments and who hates me and who's down talking me when you got 185 thumbs up, but you're worried about the six thumbs down. You're worried about the one person calling you an idiot instead of the other people saying, thank you for the content that you bring to the table. So if I were to say one thing, I wanna make sure everyone out there thinks positively today, man. Make sure you tell your, your family members that you love them and uh, you know, be thankful for whoever you do worship and uh, just be happy that you have life. and um, Stay positive, man, stay positive. We can do it, hang in there. It's a great word for the day and the wholesome one put it in YouTube terms because both of us can relate to that where human nature is, and this has been proven scientifically, we can get nine positive comments and one negative comment, whether that is through social media or direct face-to-face -face contact, we're going to focus on the negative. Oh, they didn't like me. They thought my hair looked weird or they thought whatever they thought. And we don't fo focus on the positive that's coming into our lives. And um, definitely a good word off the top. Uh, and we can we can take that same mindset uh, for the Miami fan base and project it to this football program because there's a lot to focus on that may not necessarily be too positive here as the team's getting ready to take on NC State coming off another loss uh, that that almost turned at the, at the last uh, few minutes. It was an exciting back half of the fourth quarter, wholesome one against North Carolina. Hey, um, I tell you what, you, you look at the way that these young men, it, it does show a lot of promise. It does show a lot of ability out there with the way that Tyler Van Dyke went out and played football. I, I think he's a gunslinger, so he put the ball out there for his wide receivers. A young man from Connecticut who had spoke openly about not seeing this much athleticism until he got to the University of Miami and saw, like, I got to be very persistent with my passes because these guys are moving. OK, and I can't throw it behind them because the cornerbacks are moving. And, you know, Miami, we've spoken about how uh, atrocious our cornerback play has been. So the game has kind of moved a lot faster for him. And the blessing in disguise of the De'Ara King injury this offseason was that a young man like TBD spent a lot of time with the ones and the twos, building a lot of reps between him and Jake Gar uh Yeah, Jake Garcia. I almost said Jeff Garcia. I'm used to saying that. Uh, but anyway. It worked out, and it has worked out for what we've been doing right now. He showed some things, even the ability to get out of the pocket and the way that he was throwing the ball down the field, the way that he's completing these, these passes of 10, 15, 12, or 22 is going to push that defense back. Okay, that's going to force you out of cover three into maybe some man, into some cover two. Okay, you're not going to go one high safety, which means you're going to load the box because that's what one and three, you know, that's the odd numbers. Okay, that means you're going to have one person over top. Two and four means you're going to have two people over top. Now, you can get all fancy with your cover fives and your cover sixes and your cover nines, which are plays on the natural one, two, three, and four, just a combination of one of those, one of the four. But um, what we saw in that game were players like Rooster. Okay, I, I love the way um, Rooster is, is – uh, Jalen Knighton, number four for the University of Miami. I've also spoken at nauseum about how, to me, it was never about one person over the other. Donald Cheney Jr. over Cam Harris. Cam Harris over Donald Cheney Jr. Jalen Knighton over all of them. It's not about that. The best coaches understand that we have to use our players to make them be in the best position possible. That's how you allow a young man to be successful is, I know I have Jalen Knight and who's a scat back. Why am I giving him dives up the middle on third and one? It doesn't make any sense. When I have Cody Brown, when I have Thad Franklin, and when I have Cam Harris, all three of them standing on my sideline. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But... That's what happens when you don't have a connection with your young men. That's what happens when you don't really, you know your roster. And to some people, they're like, how could some YouTuber know the roster better than the coach? Listen, it happens more than more than you would think because their mind is usually stuck on their scheme. Okay, their mind is usually stuck on the fact that 
I want numbers this way and RPO this and statistics that. That's where their minds usually are. The elite of the elite can mix both to where they know their players. They know what they do well. They also know their scheme and they want to be able to mix their scheme with the players and put them together and play situational football. Okay, that's where you have your your elite minds, especially offensive minds at the collegiate level. Okay, and and both of the two people that I've spoken about already in Rooster and TVD showed a lot of flashes. They also made some mistakes. Jalen Knighton put the ball on the ground. Okay, Uh, TVD had some costly, costly um, interceptions uh, that happened. But again, he also had plenty of plays where he put it up he chucked the ball up and said, hey, you want to talk all that smack? You you want to say that you're this, you're great, you're that? Go make a play on the football. And, and he did that. Um, there was also a, a couple sightings of some other people. Will Mallory caught a pass. I mean, wow. <laughs> Woo! Shout out to that guy. Um, we had some key drops that, that really – we're, we're starting to get on, under our skin. You know, Mike Harley dropping passes and Rambo dropping passes and not fighting back in coverage. Keyshawn Washington, uh, Keyshawn Smith, excuse me. Keyshawn Smith made some plays that I was pretty excited and fired up uh, with the way that he was playing ball. But um, uh, I say all of those things to say this. Miami took a very bad UNC team to the brink. Uh, there were plenty of times where I felt like both teams had a chance to take over this game, but it uh, this is what happens when you have two bad teams play each other is, you know, UNC, they may struggle to make a bowl. Miami, in my opinion, won't make a bowl game this year. So you have these two teams that were going at it. It's high scoring. It's yards everywhere. It's points everywhere uh, because the deficiencies on both side, on both teams were on a defensive side of the ball. Um, the, the, the horrific level of tackling uh, I, I don't I don't get it, but it has been there for the longest. And, and Coach Donut Diaz has allowed to continue to play these young men who don't tackle. Uh, that's just his thing. He wants the older guy on the football field. Now, on the flip side of that, we did see some young guys get a lot of reps and make some really big plays. Five star athlete James Williams, man. Safety, outside linebacker, middle linebacker, defense end, whatever you want. James Williams had snaps all over the field this past Saturday and made plays all over, whether it was in the pass rush game, as I illustrated before, he almost had a chance at an interception. He made some nice open field tackles. Okay. When you have young players like that, they're going to make mistakes also. And that's why you don't get as upset with a guy like Cam Kitchens, with a guy like James Williams. Okay. These are 18, 19 year old guys out there just trying to make plays. They're not loose. They're used to losing. They don't want to lose, and they're fighting their asses off to win games. Now, you got guys like, uh, you know, Bubba Bowden and, and Gerrit Hall and Amari Carter, guys who are 22, 23, who are making the same mistakes as the 18 and 19-year-old guys. That just doesn't make any sense. We're having blown coverages. We're making bad matchups. We're making bad open field tackles with lack of communication. I mean, these things that are very, very basic, they're day one things. OK, we're in week six, week seven, and we're still having to do a whole bunch of tackle drills because we can't tackle these things. Are, is It's it was infuriating, Mark, but just to the point now where you're numb to, it. you know what you're going to get with a Manny Diaz coach team. They're going to come out slow. They're going to be pretty lackadaisical from down and down and out. OK, it's going to be up and down in your production defensively. And if the offense isn't clicking, it's going to be a blowout. We were blessed to have the opportunity where the offense made some plays finally, and we put some people in open space, and we made some we made some uh, we made some plays and we scored some points. But unfortunately, we lost to a very bad UNC team. Coach Diaz is 0 and 3 against uh, UNC, and he is also 0 and 7 in his last games against Power Five opponents. We spent a lot of last week talking about uh, replacing this person and bringing in who has the resume to do the head coach. We're not going to do that this week. We're going to talk ball this week. Uh, At the end of the day, I think it has been pretty apparent that we need to go in a different direction as far as leadership. Uh, These young men deserve better. And you saw that this past Saturday. You saw 
a lot of pieces offensively, a couple pieces defensively, that if we give them a competent staff, we give them a competent athletic administration that wants to be good to great at football and be a top 15 team, which is what we agree Miami should be, okay, especially in today's day and age, then they'll do better. My last soliloquy on that I'm going to say is uh, prayers up to Camp Harris, torn ACL loss for the season. Uh, I know that he has been a polarizing figure as far as conversations on here, conversations on my channel, conversations on Twitter. And, um, you know, Mark, as much as people want a lot of the other guys to play, majority, similar to the Tennessee thing where people were throwing stuff on the field, majority of the people want to win. And they just want to see the best players go out there because they see flashy stuff. That's fine. There is a small, finite group of this Miami Hurricanes fan base that actually celebrated our starting running back being hurt because they feel like this seniority is over and that now we don't have to worry about having slow backs or the worst back in school history starting for the University of Miami. Um, I know Cam Harris would never come out publicly and say anything, but, um, you know, if you're one of those people, that's pretty sad. This is a young man who worked his behind off to come to earn a scholarship to the University of Miami, to earn a scholarship as, uh, to be a four-star uh, running back, top 10 at his position, one of the best running backs in one of the best states of football. In, of football. And, uh, it's sad to know that there are people in our fan base who, who relished the fact that this young man's knee was blown out and he would no longer play for the University of Miami the rest of this season. So uh, I pity you. I hope that you, you 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 change your mindset because these that's someone's child. 